This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting Conan Exiles video. Today we're going to talk about easy to get thralls to help you jumpstart your early game. Let's get to it. The first thralls we are going to take a look at are the mercenary fighters. You can actually get these thralls before you hit level 10. You can actually get them at level 1. You can see I got some Stygian fighters here. We got two level 2s and a level 3, but you get all kinds of anything between level 2 and 3 and your damage modifiers on them are going going to be anywhere from 1.2 to 1.4 and their stats are going to vary although they won't be bad I mean you can see here that these level twos decent amount of HP uh, that one actually didn't get too much in the way of damage then we got a little bit of bonus damage we come over here and look at this one you know 5,000 HP got crap for strength but it doesn't really matter because you're essentially, if you get them that early, you're going to use one of these to knock out other thralls that are much better than them. The key thing to them is you can get them at level one. And how you do that is pretty simple. You're going to come over here to the jungle all around the shore here and out in the water. And in here, there are treasure chests. You just go to those treasure chests, grab the gold out of them, and then you're going to swim over here to Buccaneer Bay. Once you're over here at Buccaneer Bay, you can easily bypass all the pirates you just swim over this way swim through here and swim over to here until you pop out of the water right about here once you pop out of the water you're going to run over here and then run up the back side of this tent and drop over the edge and then you're going to want to talk to this lady right here talk to this lady she's going to sell you some mercenary fighters they're 100 gold a pop you just grab 100 gold there you go, and you can look, see we got uh, some Stygian Fighters and a Zingorian Fighter 3. They just vary, just gives you any random thrall. You can see some more Stygian, a Hyborian Fighter 2, and uh, you can get those right from the get-go as soon as you jump into the game. The next easy thrall to get is Thugra. He spawns in the same spot every time, so he's super easy to get a hold of and super reliable. His damage modifier is just 1.4. It's not too much, and his HP, you know, there's 4,565 on that one. We can take a look at his stats here. Not that great, but what do you expect for a cannibal? You know, this one, 3,000, a little, almost 4,000 HP, 18% uh, additional damage there. He get, gets plenty of bonus health, and that's really all that matters if you put them in decent armor. This one's got just shy of 5k HP, a little bit of extra bonus damage there. The key to this guy is, is he's really easy to get and he always spawns in the same spot. Where is that spot? It is right here at Thugra's stand. And if you take a look, you can see where I am on the map. You just run up through here, up through the desert, and there's a pathway right up through here like this. Now you have a few different options depending on what level you are. You can get a really easy to get early game truncheon. Let's make sure we have cloak off. Hey buddy. Hey. And then you're going to run past him and you're going to run over here to this little divot here. If you run over to this divot, he can't hit you, as you see here. Uh, you have to be careful if you get too close when he swings down like that. He can hit you, but he can't reach you if you stand right here. If you have the blunted javelin, you can equip that and you can come up to here and you can target lock him and poke him. Like so. And he won't come down here. You would think that he could come down this little ramp here, but he won't. You can see there, he just hit me. You have to be careful. Make sure you stay back. And you can always roll over the edge there if uh, things get a little hairy. I don't really recommend doing that, but you can. Your easiest bet is to just step down here. And I'll show you real quick how easy it is to knock him out. Let's go out of god mode. I'm also going to take off the heels since they edit my height. We're going to run back out here. I'm going to take Cloak back off. We'll grab him. You can grab just him and nobody else because he stands right there pretty far from the rest of the people over there. And we're just going to walk over to here. Now, it's a little bit more difficult if you have a truncheon. I recommend also using a shield. And what you essentially want to do is wait for him to do a combo. And then you want to whack his legs a few times. Then you want to take a step back. You want to whack his legs a few times. And then take a step back because he can hit you. You can also attempt to crouch, but he'll hit you 
every now and then it's really unreliable how often he hits you when you crouch but you can also kind of just kite him over to this side and do the same thing since it's easier for you to step up this side than it is for him but you can see he gets stuck really easy and can't really handle this little divot here oh, we just took a hit there took another hit but that's why we want to have the shield and we can just swing in on him like this couple times and then if we need a break we can jump down here we can also do it like i said with the blunted javelin it makes it a little bit easier we can target lock on him we can hit him from here poke him a few times and it knocks him out a lot faster and we hit him a lot more reliably because of the reach with the javelin there you go we took a little bit of a hit there but it's not too much. He does a little bit of damage. If you're super early game, he's going to hit you a lot harder than uh, if you at least have like some light armor or some medium armor. But you get the general idea. So that's all you got to do. He can't uh, get down here and you can use this little spot to your advantage. Just be careful. He does have a little bit of reach with that club. Next up, we have the Black Hand Spy Fighters. Their damage modifier is 1.3, and they get decent stats for how easy they are to get. You can see here, 4,488. You know, not too crazy, but remember, these are thralls that are going to get you snowballing quick and easy early game, help you get much stronger thralls by knocking them out for you. So 4,012 HP on that one. They actually get a decent amount of bonus vitality per point. And if we take a look, Look at the last one here he didn't do too hot he got you know more agility than anything unfortunately they also get decent amount of accuracy if you want to use them as an archer by fighters are really easy to get you're just going to you can actually swim all the way to get them you can just swim all the way down here and then come out of the beach right here once you come up out of the water onto the beach you just run up this path here and it's going to take you into the backside of buccaneer bay once you follow the path down and you get to the exit here to where Buccaneer Bay is, all you have to do, run past this guy here, and you're going to want to climb up the side of the mountain right here. You should be able to do it pretty easily. It doesn't take a lot of stamina to climb up it. You just climb right up here, and then you're going to climb up a second time right here. And you want to get to the back side here because they can't get you back here and you can actually knock them out if you have a blunted javelin. So here we go and we're just going to bait them over. You can see them right here. This is what we want and we can actually get their attention and hey, come back over here. I wasn't done with you. Hey, yeah, 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 come over here. So you can poke them. They can hit you with those axes, by the way, but you can also there you see uh, you can also hit them through the wall like so you can use the truncheon as well as you see there but you have to get much closer and you take more of a chance of being hit by their axe uh it's much better if you use a blunted javelin because you can reach in poke like that and then roll back you can actually go in and get them to start an attack and then run away from them wait till they're finished their combo and then hit them and if you get just right and line it up you can actually Kind of, oh, I poked right between her legs. Yeah, they got mad reach on that. You can see we're taking a little bit of damage there. There we go. There we go. And then once you've got them knocked out. Oh, she's almost there. There we go. You can actually reach them from here and just pull them through the wall. So we're just going to grab our bindings and then we run up there and you can see I have her. And then we can just yank her right through the wall. There you go. Pretty quick and easy to get a hold of. Next up is one of my favorite ones to get me snowballing, and this is the Relic Hunter Slave Taker. They have a damage modifier of 1.4, but they get decent amount of HP. You can see here, 6,431 on that one. Uh, not too great on the whole strength front, but they get a lot of uh, vitality, which is pretty nice. And then we'll take a look at this one here, 7,975 tons of vitality not too much on the strength come over here check out this one 5573 vitality that one actually got a little bit of strength action going on there but uh, once again health is mainly what we want so that we can pack a bunch of armor on them put some gruel in them and allow them to knock out better thralls for us you've all seen this one plenty of times we're over here where they spawn at you can take a look here i've got it marked on the map here 
and they spawn right here really reliable anywhere from two or level two or three usually you'll get threes but once in a while a two will spawn in there all you have to do is come over here to the side of the cliff right here and you can actually climb up this right here like so climb up this and then climb right up here the cool thing about this is is they can't get you when you stand right here so you can use a truncheon. I prefer the blunted javelin. Use whatever you have. I'll show you how to do it with both. It's much easier with the blunted javelin. So we're just going to grab one of them and you can actually bug them out so that you only get one of them to stay over here, but it takes a little bit of effort. It's much easier just to knock out a bunch of them. If I come over here, it should break aggro with the majority of them. There you go. And then we have one and I didn't hit it in time. If you hit the the one before it returns, you'll keep aggro on it. Okay, I managed to keep one while the others are running back over there. So if you have the javelin, you can just target lock and then hit them a couple of times and then back down and around the side. Let them perform their combo. Run up, target lock, hit them a couple of times and then back down the side or get hit because you failed to do it properly. If you have a truncheon, you essentially do the same thing. So we're going to grab its attention, but you can block as you're running up there because you have to get a little bit closer. So we can just hug the side here, block, hit him a couple of times. <laughs> And then if we need a break for whatever reason, we can just roll down the side here, heal up, do whatever we need to do, and continue on until we've knocked them out. You get the idea. Basically, this is a safe spot to heal that holds aggro so that you can keep them next to you and knock them out really easily. Last but not least, we have Beastmaster Timos. I saved him for the last because he's a little bit harder to get a hold of than the others. He doesn't really have a, a spot like the others do that you can kind of just hang out to uh, glitch the AI a little bit. Uh, you actually have to fight him legit style, although he is super reliable and is almost always in the same spot. He shares his spot with one other thrall, so if he's not there, you just kill that thrall and then wait patiently and he should spawn. He has a really high chance to spawn. He has a damage modifier of 2.8 and he gets a ton of HP. He is a thrall that will last you. He will last you to end the game if you get him early on. You can see some stats there, some more stats there, and our last but not least stat sample there. This one got 11,000 HP. That is a ton. It doesn't even matter that he took a loss in strength. With this much HP and good healing, he can tank pretty much anything for you. And it just becomes a situation where he just you just wait it out. You just wait it till whatever he's attacking dies because it'll never be able to kill him. He doesn't need to do a lot of damage. Okay, we are over here where he spawns now. The easiest way to go about doing this is just run down the shoreline, run across the shore here, run across here, and then run over around to the backside. Remember, the backside is always the best side. Once you're over here, drop a sleeping bag down right about here because the chances of him killing you if you do this early game are pretty high. You're going to run into a few crocodiles. That's about it. Nothing too serious. You can just outrun them. Then you're going to climb up the side of the mountain here once you have placed your sleeping bag. Let's make sure that I have cloak deactivated. I'm just going to fly up here for time saving purposes, but you can climb up here relatively easily. And then we're going to pop out right here. Now he's going to come at you. What I highly recommend doing is fighting him over in this area right here in order to keep from aggroing his other people, unless you want to fight his other people. I don't want to fight his other people. I just want to fight him. You can fight him very easily by just popping up over here. You will get his attention. You can use a blunted javelin or the truncheon, but you can see here we just aggroed his people, so we don't want to do that. What we're going to do is we're just going to fall back down here. I'm going to show you how to do this with both the truncheon and the blunted javelin, starting with the truncheon. So we're just going to come over to here. You can see we got his attention again, so we're going to pull him back here. This time we won't aggro anybody else. And then we're going to block with our shield. He will kick to try to break that block. So you have to be very careful. Let him jab you and then hit him. 
then block, let him jab you, then hit him. Same thing, over and over again. This is it. This is what you're going to do. Very carefully, very methodically, because otherwise, he will, uh, he'll kick your butt. And you're going to do the same thing with the blunted javelin. So he, he hits you, you give him a little love tap there. With the blunted javelin, you can stun him a little bit easier as you saw there and get in more hits. It's not quite as slow as if you use a truncheon. But you can see there he got in a few hits on us and he hits like a freaking truck. If that happens, you can actually run back into here, but you need to be very careful on how you kite him because if he kites all the way back into here, he will still be able to hit you. There's a spot right here where he can't get you and he won't try to. As you see there, he ran away and now it's a situation where the AI is broke and it doesn't want anything to do with you and you basically got to get on top of him, but you can't kite him all the way in here. Your easiest bet to do this is to kite him over here if you need to heal and then run away. The other thing you can do is jump up here is another safe spot. If you need to heal, you can get right in here. You can see we broke the AI again. Once again, if you kite him too close before you do this, he will stand here and hit you with the spear. The other thing you can do is you can get up here as well. I saw something. And if you take a look right now, you, we can get some distance and it breaks the AI. He doesn't know what to do. But you have to be very careful when you do that. Get to one side or the other. Once again, he can hit you with the spear. He is very dangerous to try to get early game, but it is doable. If you are inexperienced with the game and you're just starting out, I highly recommend going for any of the other thralls that I've showed you. And then you use those to come in here and tame him. Next, I have Insta spawn on. I just want to show you real quick how reliably he spawns here. There we finally got an animal tamer after four of them. We kill the animal tamer. He immediately respawns. Animal tamer. He immediately respawns. So he's super reliable. Okay, so hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully it helps you get an easy thrall early game to help you jumpstart your gameplay and start snowballing quickly. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my elite crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.